Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Hunter Fan TV. Back at you, another video, man. You know what time it is, bro. Uh, the third quarter, uh, well, I'm calling the third quarter, the Ravens season just ended. So we're going to recap, man. We did it for the first quarter of the season. We did it for the second quarter of the season. Here we are with the third quarter of the season right here, man. If you like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button at the content of this channel. Go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Uh, so listen, man, the Ravens just finished up, like I said, that third quarter of the season. And they went, uh, they, they went four and one. Had a bye week in there, everything like that. So Saints games a W, 27-13, bye week. Then a W versus the Panthers, 13-3. Loss to the Jaguars, 28-27. Uh, w versus the Broncos, 10-9. And then obviously they just beat the Steelers on Sunday, 16-14. Okay. So what can we take from these games, right? Now I will say this: the defense has been pretty good in all of these games except for the Jaguars game. The Saints game really should have been 27 to 6, but Marcus Peters gets with that touchdown at the end of the game by not just playing really through the whistle. Um, Panthers game is a dominant one. The Jaguars game is extremely disappointing. It's 27 to 10 with uh, like nine minutes left, something like that. And the Ravens end up giving up 18 points in the last eight, nine minutes of the game. Uh, Broncos game, another good after by the defense. The Broncos aren't very good offense, but still their defense did what they needed to do. And the Steelers game, I mean, you get three interceptions. Um, yes, it is the backup quarterback, Mr. Trubisky, but he is a starter in this league. It's not like, you know, he came in for a veteran. You know, the Ravens would have been going against Kenny Pickett, who was a rookie. So those three picks possibly really could have happened again if Kenny Pickett was playing. So uh, the defense played well. Now, the offense, this is where it gets tricky, okay? Now, the Saints game ran the ball really well. The Steelers game, they ran the ball really well. Um, but it just seems like this office has been out of sync, it's been out of rhythm, right? Now, the title of this video came from John Harbaugh's speech after the Broncos game, and that's pretty much what sums up this, this quarter of the season right here. I'm going to play a little snippet of it right there. Listen, man, we're going to all talk about this. It's pretty or that ain't beautiful or this isn't right. Do we care? No! no. And who's no. getting better than us? No! Nobody! Nobody! We won in the National Football League, it ain't supposed to be easy. It's not pretty, but it's us, right? Now, that speech is something that could be used, like I said, for every single game throughout this stretch right here. Maybe except for the Saints game. Saints game is the only one where it felt like it was a dominating effort from start to finish, even if the offense wasn't clicking as, as much as we would like it to be, specifically the passing game. Uh, but it was a good effort all around. The issue is this, right? Um, Gray Roman, and this offense has kind of felt stagnant. Now, we already felt that before, but these last games, we've really, really felt that effect, right? Um, it's because it's interesting. During this period, too, this is when the news comes out, excuse me, whether or not Greg Roman is going to be the new head coach of Stanford, right? That falls through. So now it's like, well, are the Ravens going to fire Greg Roman? No, they're not, because John Harbaugh sticks with it to the very end sometimes and really too often, right? Um, so listen. The offense being stagnant, the offense not having the kind of explosion and success in the pass game really should be, shouldn't be too much of a surprise, okay? This is what Greg Roman has done throughout his entire career. We're talking about 49ers, Buffalo, everywhere, right? The highest rated pass game he had last year was last year when he actually opened up the offense and the Ravens finished 13th in passing. But besides that, Greg Roman, his teams usually fin around somewhere between 30 and 26 in passing. That's just what it is, and that's what it's going to be as long as he's here. So I think that uh, Tyler Huntley had about, before he got injured, of course, had about like 80 yards passing versus the Steelers, um, and that's into the third quarter, right? So about 80 yards passing. Gray Roman has always put a ceiling on where you can go with the passing game, and that's just the truth, man. Uh, we haven't seen Lamar Jackson has full potential because of it, in my opinion, um, but... Looks like that's where we're going to be for the rest of this season, right? So it's just interesting that the fact that this quarter season we really got to see the um, the, the foreseen the issues that could come along come along in the playoffs, right? Ravens can run with the best of them, they can, and that's no doubt. That's no um, there's nothing that's breaking news. But can they throw the ball when they need to? The Jaguars game was their best game that they had throwing the ball. Lamar Jackson made some incredible passes that game. Um, all quarterbacks missed throws, so yes, he did miss Demarcus Robinson on a touchdown, but Demarcus Robinson also dropped a touchdown in that same game. So Demarcus Robinson catch that touchdown, it's a, it's, a, it's a win, right? It is what it is, so you know. Um, games usually come down just to one play, but you know, that was the probably the only game where like the passing game had any kind of 
life to it and it still wasn't that good right um so now what else is, what else can we say about this quarter season right um that the Ravens kind of just do the same thing over and over again, right? Expect a different result. Now, I mentioned Greg Roman. The interesting part about whether or not when Greg Roman was in contention for the Stanford job, I think they gave him the job to a guy named, I think it's like Troy Taylor or something like that. But when he was in contention for the Stanford job, um, Ravens get mentioned with Willie Taggart, right? As who could be a possible guy that they're bringing in, maybe for OC or maybe just a visit, who knows? But then you get everybody on Twitter is like, this guy, Willie Taggart, really isn't that good of a coach. He kind of runs the same office against Greg Roman does. So it's, it's frustrating that it's clear that change needs to be made, but the Ravens rather just run around in the same circle, right? That's why John Harbaugh's speech in the title of this video uh, leads to one very important question. It's not pretty, but, is it us? but it's us. Is that good enough? Is that good enough for the Ravens? And to be honest, I don't know. I'm not sure it is. Uh, now listen, in the playoffs, nothing is... All the games aren't going to be pretty. Nothing's, all the games ain't going to be flashy, anything like that. But at the end of the day, you cannot always use the excuse of, yeah, we got to win ugly, right? You're not winning ugly just because it's a tough game. You're winning ugly because it's ineffective what you're doing, right? So that's the difference. Is it winning ugly because of uh, you're going against a good defense and they're making it tough on you? Or is it ugly because of the scheme? And that's the problem that I'm having really with the Ravens, right? Um, now, obviously, also what's what's big in this quarter of the season is that Lamar Jackson got hurt, right? So Lamar Jackson got hurt, uh, sprained PCL. He's been out for he was out for this Steelers game, and it's possible that he's going to be out for the next game versus the Browns. Now, John Harbaugh said that it is a possibility that the Ravens could have all three quarterbacks active on uh, Saturday. Excuse me. Versus the Cleveland Browns, that's that's you know Tyler Huntley, that's Lamar Jackson, that's Anthony Brown, obviously. All right, Tyler Huntley's in concussion protocol right now. Right, um, we'll see what happens with that, you know. But if the Ravens can't get Lamar Jackson back, they're set up nicely for the home stretch. This home stretch is going to be, I mean, don't obviously don't have to say it's very important. Of course, it's very important. It's the fourth quarter of the season. Um, it's whether or not the Ravens can get over some of these issues and break it home. Right. Um, the division is on the line. The, the, the Bengals, it feels like the Bengals are climbing up while the Ravens are not going down, but kind of leveling off a little bit, right? Um, the defense is playing amazingly. Uh, I got to talk about the defense, right? Um, Roquan Smith been an amazing addition since he stepped in the building. Uh, Patrick Queen has been a, a, a different player since uh, week five. Marcus Williams um, has been... He's been a great signing, right? Now, getting him back versus Steelers, he already made an immediate impact. Now, that's that's the good side. The bad side is the fact that I look at this defense and all the talent that it has, all the resources that is, is provided for the defense, of course, right? And my big question is, when we need to get that one final stop, can we get it? Can that be delivered? Because I'm looking at the games right here, all right? Uh, Panthers game, okay, They technically they got it. All right, cool, we'll give them that. Jaguars game, could not get multiple stops in the game. Ended up playing a lot of prevent defense, allowing the Jaguars just to scoot up the field. All right, the Broncos game. The Broncos are about three yards away from beating the Ravens, all right? the <laughs> They get that last second drive. Russell Wilson scrambles up the middle. Uh, they set up a field goal for their kicker, uh, Brandon McManus. I think it's from about 63 yards. And he ends up kicking it short. Ravens got to thank they lucky stars that it was end up short, bro. Because, once again, they allowed a drive at the end of the game to almost beat them. Then we get to the Steelers game. It's 16-7. to Three minutes left. Ravens defense. Y'all stop right here. Y'all close the door. It doesn't happen. It does not happen, right? The Steelers drive down the field. Get that touchdown. Make it 16-14. And now we got to sweat to end the game. So this defense, while it is impressive, it's very impressive. I need to see them impressive from in quarter four, not just quarters one to one to three. One to three, they look fine. They look good. It looks like a top level defense. But in that fourth quarter, I'm not sure if the play calling changes. I'm not sure if the players tighten up or it's all coincidence. But it can't be at this point. What's happening in that fourth quarter? What's happening, right? Um, now, um, that's, that's the defensive side of the ball, right? 
on offense, we've already talked about the issues and the problems and things like that. Um, going forward, I just, we, we, you know, Ravens have to do what they've always done. And uh, unfortunately, or at least in these last four or five years, is allowing Lamar Jackson to have the time to hopefully uplift the offense, right? Because the scheme's not going to do it. Um, unfortunately, you have to say things like players have to outperform the scheme, right? Players have to overcome the scheme. And usually that doesn't work, right? There's usually there's very few players who outperform what the coaches are asking them to do because the coaches are putting you kind of in the box to run the offense how they see fit. Simple as that. So certain guys getting off is just it's not it's not really viable. It's not really likely in this offense, bro. Um, I'm trying to see if I want to talk about anything else. Uh, but yeah, so pretty much I want to ask you guys, right? When John Harbaugh says things like, it wasn't pretty, but it's us, is that good enough? Is that good enough for now? Is that good enough for the end of the season? And is that good enough for the future of the Ravens? Because that's the important part. That's the question. Can they keep going forward how they're going forward and just saying, hey, look, if you got to win ugly, that's how we got to do it. Now, in my opinion, I think there needs to be a balance of, yeah, you can win the ugly game. You can win the street fight. But why can't you also just execute? Why, why can't we also just do that? Why does it always have to be on the back of, uh, yeah, man, we had to tie, fight tooth and nail, right? The Ravens still have an issue, right? Um, say, the, say the Broncos game, perfect example. Broncos are a team that's kind of right here. If you want to say the Ravens are right here, historically, the Ravens meet their opponents right there. Even the Panthers game. Panthers are not a, a really a good team, even though Steve Brooks had them playing better and things like that. Uh, they're not really a good team. But they go against the Ravens, and the Ravens meet them where they're at. And that's been a problem since John Harbaugh's been a coach. Will that change? I mean, if the same guy is still here, I don't know. But for the rest of the season, the Ravens have to answer that simple question. It wasn't pretty, but it's us. Is that good enough? And I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. We'll talk about it there. It's your boy Gabriel. This is Fan TV. I'm out.